One of Retool's unique features is the ability to update and write data back to your databases. Through tables and forms, you can edit and update individual fields or in bulk from multiple fields at once. Updating individual fields in a table. Sometimes you don't need to edit an entire record of data, but just a single field, and you want to be able to do that in a user-friendly way. Here, you'll do that with a text input and a date picker connected to two update buttons. Here's an already populated table. The get users query pulls users from the database, and the users table displays that data with get users.data in curly braces. First, drag all the components you'll need to the canvas, and be sure to name each component something that's easy to remember. Let's add a text input to update a selected user's email address, and a date picker to change the expiration date of their trial. Now think about what you want each component to do. With the customer selected, you want to type a new email address or update the trial expiration date, click the update buttons, see those changes on the table, and then clear out all of the user inputs. To do this, you'll need to write three new queries. One that updates the selected user's email address using what's typed into the text input, one that updates the selected user's trial expiration date using the date picker, and one that clears all the forms. Call these three queries, update email, update date, and clear user forms. For update email, choose the resource and the users table. Then set the action type to update an existing record. Filter by the selected user's ID and mark the change set as the email and the value of the email input. Scroll down and on success, trigger get users so the table refreshes with the changes, as well as clear user forms. Then, to run this query when you click the button, click on the button, and under On Click, select Run a Query, and select the Update Email query. After you've done this, note that you can click the button once to bring up its component settings, and then click on it a second time to actually run the button query. For Update Date, the process is nearly identical. Choose the Resource, and the Users table, Then set the action type to update an existing record. Filter by the selected user's ID and mark the change set as the trial expiration date and the value of the dropdown. Trigger the get users and clear user forms queries on success. Then have the button run this query on click. For clear user forms, Choose Run JavaScript Code for the resource. In a JavaScript query, you don't need curly braces like in other places in Retool. For each text input component, use the dot set value property and then pass null in the parentheses. The set value property is just one of the tons you can reference across Retool components, and if you want to learn more, read the components reference, which is linked below. Save the query, and then test out the buttons to see how they work. As you can see, The cells update with a text input and date picker values after clicking the update buttons. There are a few more things you can do to make this even more user-friendly. First, you can put all of these items into a container, which allows you to move them as a group while editing and for others to see it as a distinct UI element when using the tool. You can also add text components that update to the current value of the fields so a user doesn't need to go back and forth between the table and the inputs. Next, on the back end, you've probably configured your database or API to accept very specific data types and values. Retool can help you configure basic validation to prevent a user from submitting data of an incorrect type. Click on a component you want to configure validation for, and in the right panel, you can specify a data type, like a string or a number. Text input components also allow you to validate input types and look for specific things like emails or use regex for parsing. Finally, it's helpful to disable the buttons entirely if nothing is typed into them so that a user doesn't accidentally update the field with a blank input. Click on the Update Email button a single time to bring up its component settings in the right panel, and click on the Disable When text input 
which disables the button when the statement evaluates as true. Recall that the value of a text input is whatever is typed into it. So, to disable the button when nothing is typed into it, type email input.value, triple equals, an empty string. Do the same thing for the update date button, only instead of using an empty string, use null. You can now see that both buttons are disabled unless something is typed into them. Editing bulk data in a table. Let's start with an already populated table. Here, the get users query pulls users from our database, and the users table displays that data with get users.data in curly braces. To edit a record, you'll need to create a bulk update query that lets you edit and update cell values directly. In the bottom panel, click New and create a new query named Bulk Update. Select the editable database or API you want to use, choose the users table, and select the action type Bulk Update via primary key. Select the primary key column, in this case the ID, and for array of records to update, use the dot record updates property, which evaluates to a full record containing any new values typed into the table as well as any unedited values. Have the get users query trigger on success and click save. Columns and tables are not by default editable, so to do that, toggle the make editable switch for each of the columns you want to be editable. Keep in mind that this alone won't make them actually editable. You'll still need to connect your query to take care of the work on the back end. Scroll down further and select the newly created bulk update query under the drop down bulk update action. After that, you can click on individual cells and type in new values. Here's what the record updates property looks like, which will be passed to the bulk update query when we save changes. Click Save Changes to update the values in your database.